the NC is continuing to cannibalize itself. My, my view is it's beyond redemption in the short term. Mm. I think that President Cyril Ramaphosa has gotten to that stage where the longer he stays in office, the more costly it is. The EFF, in my view, positions itself, at least in its rhetoric, as a far left party. The EFF manifestos are actually center left. So indeed, Gwede Mandashe has been a powerful politician. The stance he is taking on the energy transition is crucial mm. Mm. for South Africa. Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. Today, I'm really glad to be joined by one of our country's leading and most insightful political analysts, Dr. Yes, you heard that right, Team Red Gown, Dr. Ong Ongama Mdimka. Dr. Mdimka, welcome to SMWX. Thank you, Dr. Mbofu yes. It's really awesome to be here with you uh, today. Yeah, yeah. Team red gown in the building. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. Have you worn your red gown in public just to, you know? <laughs> Not in public, so... No, you can tell us. So, you can so, tell so, us. <laughs> so after the graduation in do December, you Do you sleep in the red gown? Mm, <laughs> do you, yeah. yeah. I'd love to sleep, to sleep in that red gown. <laughs> probably dream brilliant ideas. Hey, you know, that's a one way ideas. to write a book. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you wear, when, when was the last time you, you wore it? I made sure when I packed it away in December yeah. that there's no way I'm going to miss the April graduation. Nice. So I wore it there at yeah. a different faculty graduation Yeah. because with mine, I was going to be away. So I thought mm. I have to find a way to wear this mm. gown again. Mm. Mm. It was awesome. No, congrats. Congrats. We always love when people just cross that threshold and you know inspire others so i think your your phd was a big moment for thank for you thank you and also thank you for being a good model and i think that you did it quite well before your family commit commitments got a little yeah hectic. that's uh, that, so yeah, yeah that's really kudos kudos for that no, thanks, uh, thanks for and that. your book um i'm still going to i did prescribe it so ah, i received the gratefulness that you good. posted recently yeah. uh not prescribed but recommended that's great and 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 yeah it's mm. it's, it's 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 a good addition to the voices appreciate about that. south african political economic life no for sure you've been an interesting observer on the eff the EFF is turning 10. How do you assess the EFF 10 years on? And I know you've done some academic work around where they sit ideologically. And I think we need to have a deeper conversation in South Africa about, sure. about that. Sure, so um, I think I particularly have had a love, not hate, mm. but uh, um, irritated sometimes mm. relationship with the EFF, if I can be Interesting, honest. Interesting, yeah. So when they came, they came at a time when it was clear that opposition voices in, the, in, in parliament yeah. and various legislative houses and municipal councils were drowned by ANC dominance. Mm. We've had party dominance in South Africa since 94. Sure. So I think that many South Africans would agree with me that their style of opposition, uh, which was to augment opposition voices through the theatrics they did, mm. even mm. though I was among the people who were crying parliamentary decorum. You oh, know? You're, you're part of that crew. <laughs> but, but I was yeah. so happy mm. that they had found a way to counterbalance ANC dominance to such an extent sure. that I think in 2018, among some of the pressure points mm. for there to be a change in the presidency uh, uh, as driven by the ANC yeah. was the threat by the EFF that your narrative that things have changed going forward since you've come into power mm. at the NASREC conference is going to be undermined by us continuing in parliament sure. to actually undermine the business of government. So I think that it was, it, it, it became a, in a game theoretic sense an important pressure point didn't change the numbers of opposition 
uh, benches, it did, you know, improve a little bit from 2014 to 2019. Mm -hmm. But the effect of it as a matter of strategy and tactics was if it was greater during the time of the FF. I mean, Musa Maimane had to search to find his voice now that you had an EFF, that biggest party in parliament, sure. but you were likely going to hear after every parliamentary session mm. what the EFF did, than even what government was coming to do or what the main opposition said. Yeah. So in that way, they had, I think, a brilliant strategy with hindsight, even mm. with my mm. irritation with yeah. the theatrics sometimes, sure. you know, uh, and, sure. and in fact, people really helped a lot when they showed the videos of, in Japan of people fighting with yeah, exactly. fist fights and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. see that there have been some brawls in the French parliament of late as well. So. Yes, yes. So those, those kind of helped to say, yeah. this is not uncommon, uh, but it was new when the EFF yeah. came into the National Assembly. Yeah. What have been some of your criticisms as well? Because I, my worry with the way the EFF is discussed in mainstream platforms sure. often is it goes to extremes. Oh, there, yeah. You know, there's a kind of criticism, which is just like the EFF is fascist and racist on the one hand, which I think is too extreme. Uh, or, you know, people just love the EFF and they say there's nothing wrong with the EFF, but yeah. it feels that there's almost a, a missing nuanced conversation and from a place of critique as well on the EFF. And that's something that you, I think, have done quite well in your analysis. You, you don't just say the EFF is amazing, you criticize them, but the criticism is not like they're the yeah. worst thing in the world and they're uh, going to uh, plunge the country. So I've actually enjoyed the most the political party organization building skills of Julius Malema and Floyd Chibambu, mm. along with the leaders that have been with them. Sure. Um, they have really done well and have actually negated that whole idea of cold outside the ANC, you know, mm. narrative, mm. which is why, by the way, I've often gotten frustrated at how successful they have been in building a political party yeah. that stands alone notwithstanding the genesis of its ideological, you know, offering mm. to the ANC of Julius Malema. Sure. But they, in my view, had become a party in their own right with enough substance to offer South Africa in their own right. And I kind of got a little anxious when they started embroiling the party in ANC politics. Mm. And I'll tell you why. Mm. I think that Julius Malema and Floyd had actually had it themse in themselves that they want to be game changers in the ANC. I and mean, I remember reading the letter that they wrote in 2012 reminding Zuma of what happened to A.B. Kuma mm. when he actually opposed mm. a young people's agenda. Mm. So in them, they don't like the fact that they got outsmarted politically by Zuma and the likes. And it, it's, it, it's, it, it's as though, and I'm doing psychoanalysis here, please forgive me. It's as though at the back of their mind, they still want the thrill of being drivers in the fate of the ANC mm -hmm. and in the real politic of the ANC itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that the potential mistake of that in terms of their search for new swings in electoral support mm -hmm. is in losing a voter who appreciates their radical politics minus the often anti-rule of law, you know, rhetoric of the RET faction of the ANC. Mm, mm, mm. Um, and and, sure. and for me, even though there's the stories of On Point and VBS, I had not yet come to accept that yeah. the EFF represents a kleptocratic agenda. Mm, mm. I, I think I think for I, I was willing to give them a benefit of doubt yeah. until they prove that they are they are in fact, mm. you know, uh, kleptocratic or mm. wanting to extract rents from the system. Yeah. I don't think we have enough evidence to suggest that they had gotten there. Yeah. Now if you if you pursue an ally who has branded themselves and also branded by others as being anti-rule of law, pro-corrupt uh, pro brand of radical politics. Mm. I think that's a strategic mistake. Mm, mm. It's an interesting one because I think on the one hand, you have a party that's trying to grow, that, 
you know, sees attraction in the shortcuts of getting numbers in important places. Let's take the Ace Mahashule situation. Um, but on the other hand, there's sticking to principle and maybe that frustrates your growth in the next election, but it actually builds it over the long term. And you can see the party grappling with that. Do we go and, and you know, bring people in and get the quick wins of numbers and but undermine the long term vision maybe? Or do we, you know, do we stick by principle? And I can see the grappling happening there. And it's not easy, by the way. We, I mean, it's easy for us to talk, sure. but that's exactly, in my view, where the where the where the issues mm, are. Mm. There are wins and 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 and, and losses if if they, they 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 take that route. Yeah. I wrote in 2019, ahead of the election, that now that back then the DA. Yeah had come out of a conference where the so-called black caucus within the DA had actually made impact in the mm. policy offering of the party yeah. to an extent that, um, was it a redress? It wasn't redress, but there's this word, transformation. There wasn't transformation, but there's a word which is not liberal proper yeah, no, word they, that they, it they, actually, sure. they, they had won yeah. that in a conference. Yeah. And I made the prediction that now that they had done that, the DA was going to start losing the conservative voter base. Yeah. But my argument was that they, it, it may be that it's part of the critical path they must go yeah. in order to reach that threshold in trust yes. by the average middle Absolutely. class black person Absolutely. to say, let me give them a and chance. It, it might be a short term electoral uh, you know, reversal. Indeed. Yeah. But but a long term growth. That was the plan. Yeah. And by the way, what's a moonshot pact? The, what it, yeah. it's it's attempting to bring broad based broad church politics yeah. without risking the inter the battle for the soul Very of true. the party. Very true. Now now the reason I mentioned that is because that's the the, the consequence of growth by acquisition of mm. leaders mm. who can be very strong once they come in the party. Yeah. You start introducing contestations for the soul of the party. Mm. And those threaten the founder and threaten the, yeah. the, the, the identity of the party. It's interesting that you say that. And on the DA part, can you imagine if the DA still had Maimane, Delil, Mashaba, Mazibuko, and if they had actually just stayed the course there? they would be in line in 2024. They probably would have gone a little back during the Ramaphoria era, but when reality set in, they could be governing the country after this election if they had stayed the course on that uh, trajectory. Absolutely, because you see, their issue, fortunately for them, is not that there, there's been a momentum of a negative attitude about, about their, yeah. what they do in government. Mm their conceptions about the role of the state in mm. the economy. Mm. Where they have failed the most is in whether or not you can be trusted by a broader base than the minority interest that you started represent, consolidated in 2004, mm. and by the way, started losing after the two-thirds majority in Cape Town. Sure. Because remember, the DA had displaced other parties in claiming, mm. uh, you know, absolute representation of minorities mm. by 2004. Mm. What then started happening after it secured a two-thirds majority in Cape Town in 2011 or 16, yeah, if sure. my memory say, I don't know now which one was, mm. is that you obviously, you're going to start going down. Mm. And guess what? There's been contestations of minority representation. So, to at the same phase that you were beginning to lose credibility among some of the minority voter bases that you had secured, mm. to start causing doubt also among the mm. biggest constituency yeah. was not an effective strategy. But, you know, Prof. Somatot mm. Figeno once said mm. something along the lines that perhaps, and I hope he, a Prof. wouldn't mind me saying this, that perhaps the DA realized what's happening in the rest of the continent in former settler colonies, that uh, white uh, political representation became non-existent. And they were relegated, for example, in Zimbabwe and in other uh, places where there was former settler colonies 
to voluntary associations and social associations. Mm, mm. So maybe the strategy at the time, back in back in twenty in the in the af- aftermath of the twenty nineteen election, was to try and say, consolidate what you know you have, get a breather, and then later on see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe maybe that was the strategy, but mm. I think that it 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 it. It prevented, they prevented themselves yeah. from the spoils that you know correctly seeing. I, I, I too was seeing that it would probably start gaining a lot of traction in 24 and then 29, mm-hmm. I think it would have reached a very important yeah. trust threshold. Back to the EFF, because we just to tie this, this one up, how do you see them ideologically and what is your work on their ideology been? Because I think 10 years into their existence now, it's quite interesting to hear how they're characterized because it's a complex tapestry of ideologies. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and by the way, that's what we begin to tackle in our article with Prof. Gary Prevost. Right. He's done a lot of research in Latin America mm. um, and also him and Prof. Janet Cherry have studied voter behavior in Guazakele Township. Interesting. And they were able to see from voter behavior that what explains electoral losses for the ANC is directly linked to the growth of the EFF. Mm. At least if Guazakele trends are anything to go by. Mm. Mm. And also that the voter base that was moving away from the ANC was young people. Then there's a survey they've been doing among students that also showed the popularity of the EFF. But it was interesting among students because it also showed fluidity as far as, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the idea of loyalty to party. Yeah. That the, and in fact, it explains why with every successive election in universities, there's a likelihood that power is going to shift mm-hmm. completely mm-hmm. to another you know, association. Mm. So, so, so back to your point, your, your question. I, in that article, so Prof does this quantitative data sure. uh, looking at Kwazakele. In that article, what I did was to trace the genesis of the policy offering of the EFF. Mm. Um, when the ANC wrote about radical economic, uh, uh, ANC Youth League, uh, economic freedom in our lifetime, mm. I actually wrote a detailed paper uh, looking at what would be the policy outlook for the country mm. if they were to, you know, have their way in 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 the in the, with these seven cardinal pillars. Mm. Obviously, the ANC creatively uh, dealt with the issue of whether to nationalise in 2012 by saying yeah. we're going to upgrade the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act, mm. and that's why how the debate was closed. Uh, I think after uh, Paul. At, uh, Paul, uh, what was I forgot his surname. I was a, a mining engineer at MineTech. Um, anyway, so it's gonna it's gonna come. Mm. Uh, and 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 Paul had led that process of study on what to do. Is it to nationalize mm. or should the party um, um, uh, uh, revise the minerals and petroleum mm. resources? To it? So in the ANC, in my view, that debate was settled. And then the EFF, in my view, positions itself, at least in its rhetoric, as a far-left party. But interestingly, when I look at the manifestos, mm. the say for the policy, the, sorry, the campaign craft platform, such as land and nationalization, yeah. the EFF manifestos are actually center-left Absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> you know, so they want to do, if the ANC wants to push industrialization, the EFF wants to do it 10 times. Yeah, sure. I remember this one where they were talking about special economic zones mm. everywhere. And and by the way, I love how they launched their manifestos and how Julius Malema is able to craft a message for each constituency to the soldiers we have heard you to the people in, I think they talked about in Tabangulu and a, a, a special economic zone mm-hmm. somewhere there. So it's, it, for me, it, 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 it's a, te- while it positions itself as a, at least further left of the ANC, mm-hmm. 
the policy offering is centrist, which is why, by the way, when I speak to corporates, I always say South African policy, the rate, the continuum of policy uh, offering mm. in South Africa will always settle at the center. And there yeah. would be variations of center left, center right, because the uh, voters have not been big favor, uh, the, the, uh, big fans of extremist politics. Sure. And, 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 and our political parties are aware of that, I think. Yeah. It's an important point. We could go on about the EFF for the whole podcast, but let's also try and uh, turn our attention to other questions. Um, how do you analyze the ANC at the moment and particularly President Ramaphosa's position? It's a few months, well, it's six months actually now after the landslide result in NASREC 2.0. How do you analyze where he is right now politically? Very interesting. His biographer makes reference to him being an enigma. You know, in the aftermath of Nasrek 1, to borrow from your terminology, hmm. the president had a, 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 a situation unlike any ANC president before him where the party itself was split. Mbeki dealt with a, 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 the leftist fringes of the alliance. Uh, Zuma had a decisive victory that allowed him to do a purge. I mean, countrywide purge. Ramaphosa had in true, you know, form to a party that's at war it's with itself and split in the middle with no winners. A, a initially a stalemate. And then I watched as within two years, power in the NEC and National Working Committee began to shift towards him. Mm -hmm. And therefore he was able to win a lot of victories. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about uh, or character of candidates mm -hmm. for local government, um, the thing about how to choose mayors, yeah, the step aside, the step aside mm. thing with the, we, 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 one of his biggest, then he wins power in mm. 20, in 22. Yeah. And in my view, he seems to have gone back to the enigmatic self mm. where you would be expecting a lot more boldness as far as leadership is yeah. concerned especially in your second term, as, as far as ANC politics is concerned, mm. it, 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 usually people, presidents in, at a government level are looking for apex priorities, those things which they want to cement their legacy uh, with. Then at a party level, either huge purges and strengthening of their hand in order to make sure that they, they can deliver Okay, and there doesn't seem to be a significant part of that happening, but it seems to be that in the character of Fikil Mbalula, he has found the Secretary General in the order of Egwede Mandash, in who Egwede Mandash was in a, to the Zuma administration mm. and to the Zuma leadership. I think that President Cyril Ramaphosa has gotten to that stage where the longer he stays in office, the more costly it is because he, he's proving that he doesn't want to lead. He seems to be preferring seeing causing victories to happen without him being traced mm. to be a cause. Yeah. So I'm looking at how he's responding to this thing of a, a potential fallout with uh, Asma, sorry, not Asa, uh, uh, Paul Mashatile. Mm. The issue about Gwede Mandashe. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I said, by the way, if, if, if this rhetoric that is attributed to Fikil Mbalula about Mandashe mm. is anything to go by, mm. we are about to witness a huge shift mm. in the power games in the ANC, where Fikile is going to be very strong. Mm. This is my impression of mm. it. Mm. Is going to be very strong. And I think permitted by President Ramaphosa, mm. or in fact, encouraged by him. Interesting. To shift power from the Chris Anikabal. 
this is what I'm sensing. Yeah. If if yeah. if the developments in the past two weeks mm. are anything to go mm. by. Yeah, that's an interesting point because Mandashe has actually wielded ANC power for an extremely long time. In fact, if anyone has played the ANC power game the best, I would say, over the last 20 years, you could say it's Gwede Mandashe. So to go to battle with Mandashe, you must know the ANC in and out. Or not everyone's reign lasts forever. And maybe finally the hold of Mandashe after his slim victory over the party is starting to wane. So it's this... It's the former Noom people, because mm, mm. before him it was Khalema, sure. and people spoke a lot about how Khalema was very instrumental in the rise of the Jacob Zuma, mm. uh, you know, uh, 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 reign, as yeah. it were, in the yeah, ANC. Sure. So, indeed, Gwede Mandashe has been a powerful politician. Yeah. So I I laugh when this story is told in the, in the, in the, in the province that he actually wasn't a preference of neither of the factions mm. in the Eastern Cape. Mm. Apparently... For for the recent Nazareth yeah, conference, yeah, right? Yes. When, because you know this guy, they start lobbying very early. Sure. And uh, 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 the word is that he then showed them power games when the mayors were being chosen. Mm and made strategic maneuvers to outsmart both <laughs> powerful politicians mm. in the reigning faction mm. in the Eastern Cape mm. on who became mayoral candidates. And, wow. I, and, and the word was that Eugene Johnson was actually his uh, e e card. Mm. And the message was that I, I'm still gay, I can still play this game. Mm. Mm. And it seems that from that experience, then the relationships became warm again, hmm. <laughs> and and he secured the provincial uh, a, a vote. Uh, whether or not that's true, or not, you know, yeah. and 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 but also a crucial moment, uh, Cesare, is Section eighty nine report comes absolutely. up. Absolutely, absolutely. The president wants to resign, as we hear, and mm. I think he should. He, we, we, we'd been saying he should, and I was among the first people to say... I remember that. You a, know, a very brave move uh, on your uh, part. One of the few people in mainstream media platforms who said, as that report came out, resignation. You, you know, you know, so, because there are things which you can politically maneuver. Mm. There are things where you cannot justify leveraging political power sure. in order to, you know, mm. to, to escape. Mm. So he then apparently tells these communications people of the president, call off this press briefing and indeed convinces the president to stay on. From a, from a, from a, from a process point of view, the ANC under Kwede Mandashe has preferred political solutions mm. Mm. over changes that are triggered at a state level. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, I argued that notwithstanding my own uh, sure. uh, reservations about his uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa's stay, what I accepted was that at least the party was facing a process in which it could manage a transition that's mm. party-centric. Mm. Sure. So he doesn't resign. There's a conference mm. coming up. Instead of precipitating a, 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 some crisis at the level of the state, sure. when you have a conference that's coming, which might actually have a bearing on what you then do with the crisis you've... You'd so from mm. a tactical point of view, I was quite happy. Sure. But the longer... So the conference came and it went. And... The ANC used its majority in parliament, and then it became business as usual. Mm. What, I, what I think, though, is that his defiance, not in this instance. By the way, I've got a piece I've written on how the stance he is taking on the energy transition is crucial mm. Mm. for South Africa. Um, uh, uh, so, so, so this is not somebody who's a hater who's saying sure, this. Sure. Um, I do think that there was a time, I don't know what he said publicly. And I thought, you don't, you, you just don't play that game, mm. especially when you are aware that you have got power. Now, the th thing is with power is that it makes you arrogant. And I think that 
if I were him or his advisor at the time, I don't want to be his advisor mm. uh, or any politician's advisor. Mm -hmm. At the, I, I, I think he after, you know, refusing to there was something that needed to be done. He refused, uh, not recently with the, you know, being present. I think there was something that needed to be signed mm. about two three months ago, which he didn't. So after winning that. You then don't do something again that actually shines a spotlight on your political principle, um, because you then push them on a, in a, into a corner where they must now mm. show that they can do something with mm. you. Mm. And so, the Fikile Mbalula rhetoric then, or the alleged rhetoric from him, in my view, is part of mm. a pushback to counterbalance his sense of invisibility. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I answered no, no, the question I, you were asking, by uh, the way. No, certainly mm -hmm. you did. And do you see the NC going below 50? What, Absolutely. What's, wow. So I was, again, again, so I've done an analysis of rates of change per election. Right. In the ANC. Okay. Interesting. And, and what are the numbers on that? Roughly? The, the, the range, I think the biggest was close to a 9%. Mm change between elections okay except that it wasn't between national election to national election oh sure sure it was 2019 to last year i think oh interesting so i watched those rates of change and and i've been saying by the way before yeah. uh, when ramaphoria happened that yeah they, there's been so much momentum of self-destruction in the party mm. that the best president Sil ramaphosa would do would be to reduce the rate at which the ANC is losing elections, yeah. not reverse it. And sure. indeed, in 2019, it slightly was reduced. Mm. Um, at the height or near the height of Ramaphoria at the time. Indeed. Mm. But 21, yeah. it was mid-40s yeah. in, in terms of national average. Yeah. So based on that, and election results are the best when it comes to likelihood of perf to perform in the net not that you're taking uh, 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 we're imposing the past into the future yeah but when i saw the polls both for the d for the da and the anc mm. they've been very problematic mm. i've made the point boldly against what we are seeing in the polls yeah there's no way the da is going to be in the 30s hmm. there's no way the anc is going to uh, remain around the 50 percent yeah. mark uh, or in fact have the kind of loss that the DA were taking, I think from a Daily Maverick poll, mm. which showed the ANC in the 30s. Mm. I mm. think at worst, at worst for them, it's going to sit, settle at the mid 40s. Mm. Okay, yeah. If it comes to the early 40s, that's, that would be a terrible yeah, performance sure. for them, but I doubt in the 30s. Yeah, and at best, high 40s. At, at best, mid forties. This is my wow. my, okay. my my view is at best forty seven percent. Mm. Nothing more than that. Mm. Why? Because what has been the biggest driver of ANC loss of support? It's been cannibalism. It's been splinter organizations, mm. starting with Cope. Um, you know, then the EFF. We cannot underestimate the trade union you know, mm. fracturing in terms of the support base of the ANC, because mm. you also had the Socialist Revolutionary Workers Party. Yeah. It was a, <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> uh, uh, the United Front. So, so, so these small parties eat up on its voter base. Mm. I don't know if you saw, I mean, in the 21 elections, the, what was attributed to other was above 10% mm. in terms of, you know, uh, between independent candidates and mm. civic movements that contested point. elections. Yeah. So we're not going to suddenly reverse that trend. Mm. No, the NC is continuing to cannibalize itself. Um, there, there's no way, I mean, yeah. even with the best uh, campaign craft, mm. in my view. Even if load shedding disappears three months before the election. Strange enough, so in the... It was it was good to feel load shedding had disappeared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I began to enter to ask the question: Could it yeah. be? I'd, it's amazing know? how quickly you forget what load shedding feels like, and then stage six comes back, and you're like, 
Okay. Yeah. 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 So when in that period when I had forgotten, I mm. said, do I, do I need to? Do I need to revise yeah, this? Yeah, but yeah. I doubt. I doubt. Uh, I, I, my my view is, it's beyond redemption in the short term, mm, mm. which is why, by the way, victory by either of the factions was important. Yeah. And I would. I was making the argument that if one of the factions has victor's justice, as it were, mm. there will be an immediate electoral mm. sub loss. Mm. And I suspect even in 2029, but it would it, 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 it would start mm -hmm. at least simplifying its internal mm -hmm. politics in ways that help the next inheritors of the brand to start mm -hmm. building afresh. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was not a question of whether or not it dies. It was, does it die in a way mm -hmm. that positions itself for resurrection? Do you think Palapala is going to be the final nail in the coffin, or do you think that the president ultimately uh, wiggles his way around it? I don't, you know, so, so, so what are the drivers? It's politics proper. And if we are judging it by politics proper, for now, there is no viable political um, uh, uh, trigger that can make Palapala a, a stronger moralistic sure. argument for him to resign mm. in the short term. Mm. Mm. You, in order for that to happen, you needed an internal political environment that is not conducive for President Sildrama Pos. The second thing you need politically, before the legal arguments, you need a person bold enough to launch an attack against the president who sees themselves as a successor. Sure. And generally, it's still too early in ANC politics mm. Mm. because th those usually start by year two after the conference. It's also awkward for them because there's this election. So yeah. if there's a leadership transition, then suddenly a new candidate has to, has to front the election you, campaign. You, you're quite right, Cesar. And, and And in fact, they are conscious of the fact that mm they stand, they are facing one of their most challenging elections. Mm, mm. And indeed, you're quite right. So uh, from, a, from a, a, an assessment of potential benefits yeah. by an internal candidate to challenge President Ramaphosa mm. politically, mm. they would be seriously considering the elections. Yeah, yeah. And how, I, I mean, catch, the calculations, the very same calculations DD made, mm, mm. you know, that there's, possible there's a viable pros there's a high prospect mm. that if i go with this faction mm. chances that i'm going to be a deputy president are high sure so regardless of who i like mm. but a rational choice theoretic thing becomes let me take this one yeah. so 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 i you're quite right so they they they, they would probably be thinking along those lines mm. no that's the polit the internal politics yeah. of the party sure it i'm happy that at state level in parliament, the agitations are not dying, are not dying. Mm. But we know that it's not politically viable for the alternate, for the opposition to, to drive actions in parliament that are consequential. Sure. So what do they need? Reports, either of the public protector mm. and the woofs in intelligence ones before mm. or SARS maybe. SARS. Yeah. So in this interplay between opposition power and playing the legal game, mm. the legal political nexus, for now they need the next big yeah. thing in order to make Palapala Pala something. Sure. Um, they, 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 they need, for example, an environment in which the president would be cross-examined. Mm. Because those, those some of the limitations that the public protector has cited yeah. would be solved by cross-examination. Sure. Um, unless, by the way, Arthur Fraser could, or somebody else, could bring into the public domain mm. information about 
one, at least the one, the, the one about the potential involvement of the president. I mean, this uh, social media has been on a frenzy sure. with photos and all of that. So that one is taken care of. Mm. What needs to be taken care of is challenging the narrative about how much was lost, mm. how much was kept there. Mm. Mm. You and I know that the best place to keep money is at a bank at least where you can earn interest. A billionaire, even more so in my view. So if you're going to keep money in sofas, it, 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 it's uncomfortable, you know? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. but it's interesting that it's not the questions that the public protector, mm. the acting public protector was prepared to ask. Yeah. If this money is clean, why it was kept? Sure. In, you know, and and that's a logical question to ask. Absolutely, and and we must keep asking. Uh, we we mustn't feel that the Palapala matter is dealt with now that the pres the public protector has effectively exonerated the president by saying al say the allegations that directly implicate mm. him mm. are not substantiated. Mm. Right, that's her language. Yeah. Not substantiated. Yeah. Now that language, in my view, is suggesting a limitation of quality of evidence. Sure. Sure. But us as the public are not limited by that mm. in terms of what questions we ask from Palapala. What about, you spoke about the other category. Do any of the new entrants before 2024 interest you? There's Rise Mzansi, oh, there's sure. Ch Chiluva, uh, Musi Maimani has got Bosa now. What do you think of those new entrants? I think it's it's an interesting one. You've you, You've got parties that are different to what we've had before, but sometimes draw the inspiration from what exists. Some are purely new. Sure. What's your, what, what's your thinking on the new entrance? I like the politics of the new entrance. Mm. With Rise, I mean, if I look at Song Ezo's manifesto, yeah. that whole idea of mobilizing the professional class, mm. Mm. it does speak to me. I'm not saying I'm going to vote for sure, them, but... Sure. I like that we have that option. Yeah. The the people who've analyzed the ANC, the, the ANC in in power mm. have argued that part of the process that started, by the way, long before Zuma's time, but it was it kind of gained momentum of its own during Zuma's time, was the marginalization of professionals who have prospects to live outside of politics. Mm. And people make the argument, for example, in the 90s, PE was one of the best municipalities in the country. Mm. Why? Because that UDF, very professional mm. group of people mm. who were politicians who had something else to do, had taken the process after 94 yeah. to devote themselves to country duty. Mm. The exiles, many of them didn't like that narrative because it problematized the whole notion of a, a, a messianic role that they played. Mm. And so the, the word is that they were intent on neutralizing UDF bases in the professional spaces. How true that is, I, I've, I've seen some elements of it, mm. at least at a local government level, how there was a deliberate agenda to remove those people from both initially political office and then from the state. Mm. So, so, so I've said that to say, Songhezo's plea then, in the aftermath of the war against the clever blacks, it makes sense in that in in that way. Then uh, Musi Maimane, it's it's almost as though Musi found his true voice once he left the DA. Mm, mm. Um, and 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 I I, I give this. Uh, and by the way, I'm a, I'm a centrist to center leftist. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, so 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 they appeal to me mm, because mm. of the moderate views yeah. about what we can do. With the South, with political economic mm -hmm. life in South mm -hmm. Africa, and the whole idea, he desire to professionalize the civil service. You know, yeah. we 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 do need the representation of that politics in mainstream politics, no, eh, 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 because 
you know, this anti-clever black rhetoric hasn't been great. That's why, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm part of, because remember the EFF also does actually appeal to yeah. that, to that, to that, to that base. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Except that when they slip into, mm. you know, these associations with groups, sure. then that ba that group gets a bit exactly squeamish. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Speaking of uh, clever blacks and being a clever black, as we as we are both are, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> sure. We 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 sure. are very. Sure. Uh, sure. We can't run from that label. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Being team red gown. Yeah. Uh, before we end. Um, Anyone pursuing their PhD at the moment, what what words of encouragement would you have for getting over the line of a PhD? Do it quickly before your you have family commitments. That's the first <laughs> one. <laughs> so yeah. you, you can advise on how best no, to I, do I, that. I can I, I co-sign that one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So 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 do it quickly. There's advantage to delays because then you do it uh, with, with some experiences that may make their way to your thesis. But I think with hindsight, mm -hmm. I would do it the same way also my colleague, uh, Prof. Nsagelelo Breakfast did, mm -hmm. you know, stayed, stayed, stayed the course. Um, but also, I don't know if it was your experiences mm -hmm. with that last mile. Yo. Man. Don't get started. Hey? Don't get me started. I'd love to document the emotions of it. You know what happened with me was <laughs> sure, sure. I, I finished, I finished in my mind, my thesis, right? Sure. And at that point it was, it was 89,000 words. Sure. And I was like, I'm done. And I sent it to my supervisor. And I was like, I have done everything humanly possible on this thesis. I have nothing left to give. Sure. No further drop sure. Sure. of blood, sweat, or tear. Yeah. And she sent uh, an email back saying, you can still go further. Whew. There's still more you can. And I was like, I had to find something deep inside myself, which is what a PhD is, right? It's you have transcended yourself and yeah. gone to another level. Yeah. And until you do that, you can't explain what that feeling is like. Absolutely. I think that's spot on. So that process of summoning the strength mm. every day yeah. Yeah. or as often as you should mm. to write, it's something else. Yeah. I, 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 and, and, and by the way, I've been encouraging a friend of mine that together uh, we were doing it while you know there's families and mm, stuff mm. that don't give up that's another one by yeah, the way. yeah so i i mean I, I, the way the way the, i think there are two years when mm. i registered <laughs> with a view to gaining some traction yeah. and i had the completed the chapter <laughs> yeah like, you know it happens yeah i i, I would never do one thing Mm. I, I, I get bored. Yeah. I mean, I'm a creative at heart. I mean, in my in my teens, I was writing songs, you know, mm. and, okay. and, and poems oh, and wow. all of that. Yeah. So I mean, I'm a creative at heart, mm. and creatives battle with controlling themselves yeah. and focus, getting focused. Sure. So, as a person who 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 likes doing a lot of things at the same time, mm. what helped me not to drop out was that theme of. I don't want to drop out of anything. Mm. I want to finish it. Mm. So that counterbalances the creative mm. that says I'm touching this today. The next day I'm touching somebody mm. and something else. Mm. You know. Mm. So 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 my the, the one thing I would say is please don't give up. It's cliche, mm. but you a year may pass without you doing anything of substance. But stick to it. Stick it out and yeah. and, and and finish it. Doc, thank you for joining us uh, at last on SMWX. All the best for your future and just keep doing the great things you're doing. Thanks to you, Doc, and, and thank you for, 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 for holding the fort. You know, um, the platforms that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are pushing, congratulations on the SABC gig. Thanks, uh, brother. And thank you for not dropping this one. Yeah. Uh, because also, I mean, it gives you a lot more time in terms of engaging.
definitely. And, and, and picking these brains. No, I still sure. have a backlog in terms of catching up. I still yeah. want to go back and listen <laughs> to your session with Moses Kakane. Definitely. Again, Yay, that one. Really powerful. That one was sure. a big it's one. Good. And I, and I yeah. like that you, you it, it's, a di it's divergent. Absolutely. Uh, 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 interest of yeah. society. Yeah. No, we appreciate it. Comment, like, share, subscribe. What did you think of our conversation? Let's share down below. You know we have the most interesting comment section on YouTube. So let's keep that reputation up. Drop a nice tweet to Dr. Mdimka. Follow him on all his social media platforms if you enjoyed the interview. See you on the next episode of SMWX. Team Red Gown, signing out. Signing out. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>